Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Kaylee O'Keefe Show podcast. I am super excited today to be joined by Christine Taiwei. Christine is the founder of Therapeasy, which is an online platform to find your perfect therapist. And I think it's really important for us to be talking uh, about Christine, your work, your journey this year. And so before we dig in, uh, Christine's not only the CEO of Therapeasy, she comes to us with a uh, a really impressive background. She received her MBA in bio innovation and entrepreneurship, a bachelor's degree in finance and physiology, and has led projects in investment companies, IT consulting, healthcare strategy, digital health. Like she is a total go getter. Uh, but most importantly, she really is passionate about eliminating the stigma of mental health and making it a lot easier for us all to connect in and find that person that will help us through the difficult times. Christine, I'm so happy that you're here. Welcome to the podcast. Introduce yourself, say hi, and where are you joining us from today? Thank you, Kaylee. Um, My name is Christine. Thanks for the introduction. I'm joining from Denver, Colorado. um, And uh, as mentioned, I'm the CEO and a co-founder of of Therapeasy. um, And we are a tool to help you find your perfect therapist. Yes, all right. So. Let's talk about Therapeasy. You know, you and I were chatting just before pressing record that like I have been seeing, um, you know, ads for better health (laughs) everywhere right now on TV, on Instagram. And so let's talk a little bit about what Therapeasy is and perhaps starting with your own personal journey of why launch this incredible company. Yes, thank you. Um, So it's interesting because I always kind of experienced mental health care as a patient. And so, you know, I always, I, like I shared with you, I always kind of preface, I'm not a clinician, but I can share how difficult or my experience um, in terms of navigating the mental health care system. And so I'm sure you may have, or know of people who have similar experiences. Yep. Um, about eight years ago, I actually went through a pretty traumatic um, unexpected surgery And um, that surgery led me, you know, I was a young and healthy person, did not expect it at all. Um, But the surgery ended up, you know, making me need, you know, six weeks of recovery. And so it was very, very difficult, especially as somebody in my 20 somethings, like I just did not expect to be knocked down for so long. So long story short, like that led me to have this, like, I can only explain it as like a feeling of discomfort, like maybe something is wrong with me and I don't know about it because how did that, you know, how did I end up needing an unexpected surgery and didn't know about it all along? And so what I was experiencing that I couldn't put into words was really anxiety around my health, like pretty, pretty strong, like kind of, I wouldn't say PTSD, but like trauma in terms of what went on with that surgery that I carried with me that created this ongoing anxiety or discomfort, like something was wrong. Um, so I, I realized that was not my norm. (laughs) And I think that was probably my first like, um, indication that like, maybe I need to talk to somebody because I'd never used to feel like, you know, hypersensitive to my body and my health to the point where I was overreacting. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to start looking for a therapist, Um, you know, and some of my friends, very luckily luckily for me, um, some of my friends had kind of um, broke through that stigma for me very early on to say like, it was okay for me to find a therapist at the time. So eight years ago, I started looking for a therapist. Um, I went through my insurance network. um, They gave me a long list, started calling some of the therapists on the list. And unfortunately, when the insurance network provides you a list, there are no pictures, there's just names, addresses, and phone numbers, no profiles. So at the time, I was just literally, you know, kind of phone tag, like calling different people. Most were not accepting new patients, which is really mm. because the wow. insurance network provided this list to me. Um, some had already moved away, was not even in the area. So very frustrating experience and definitely thought, you know, like this is just not worth my time. I'm a really busy young person already and I don't have time to look for a therapist. 
let alone, you know, maybe I won't have time for therapy if this is such a difficult process. <laughs> <laughs> Finally found somebody. Um, and I know you and I kind of chatted a little bit about this experience, but first two sessions, probably two or three sessions, and I was paying a copay out of pocket, even with insurance. So first two or three sessions, I just felt like, you know, I was closing off more than I was opening up to this therapist. And I don't know if it was just like a communication style difference, or she was very, very talkative. And I was experiencing something that like, I did not quite know how to articulate. Mm -hmm. So I did not, I didn't hardly ever spoke in the sessions. And it was mostly like her kind of talking wow. to me more academically, which it may work in some scenarios, but definitely not for what I was going through and what I was needing at the time. So I think, you know, for me, two or three sessions in, I knew this was not going to work and I was paying out of pocket. I was really yeah. young. Like, you know, that definitely, that financial like um, expense was, it was something that I had to invest in. And so I probably like many others, like found a way to awkwardly break up with my therapist. <laughs> I think I called her and told her like, you know, hey, can we cancel the upcoming appointment? I am traveling. And then I would, she would reschedule and I would like call again and say like, hey, I'm actually feeling a lot better. <laughs> I don't need to come in. So eventually, you know, these are just things that we don't normally know how to navigate. How do you break up with a therapist when, you know, you've started sharing all the stuff you're going through and they probably know that you need help or like they mm -hmm. can, you know, they want to try to work with you through that issue, but you're also realizing like it's a horrible fit. So that happened eight years ago. Since then, I've had five different therapists. So I don't know if it's just me or I haven't been able to really like find a therapist that I really strongly connect with. And you're sharing some really personal things. So you need to be able to trust and be vulnerable with this person. And so I've had five different therapists um, and it really became something that was like reactive for me. Like had a really horrible breakup mm -hmm. with a boyfriend was cheated on. Oh my gosh, triggered my anxiety. I'm, you know, in the midst of like a panic attack. Okay, I need to call a therapist. I need to I need to do something proactive. I feel like it's proactive, but really it's reactive. I need right. to do something to help myself. I'm going to search Google. Um, you know, better help and some of those things, some of those other tools you mentioned like were not available over the last eight or, you know, 5 to 8 years. And so I would do Google searches, psychology today is a yep. really directory. <laughs> and then <laughs> pages of results. So I don't know if you've experienced that where like, even as I'm toggling through the filters, I'm still getting like 20 pages of results on psychology today and going profile by profile until I call, find somebody to schedule an appointment with. I am. Um... So, I was, I mean, I'm cracking up as you're, you're sharing this because I have so been there and specifically this point of like, of finding the therapist. And yeah, let's say 10 years ago too was pretty different than today, but you are right. searching a list within your network. You're just seeing names, degrees, you know, wherever they went to school. And like, I'm laughing because I remember I chose my first therapist uh, when I was, I think 23 or 24, I was living in Washington, DC. And I chose her pretty much because she had a name that sounded like a family member. Like it was an Italian name. I mean, my name is Kaylee O'Keefe, but my mom's side is Tomiolo. And uh, uh -huh. so she had this very Italian name and like seemed old enough to be experienced. So like, yeah, that's why I chose her, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's such well, a good, um, that's such, that's such a good, interesting story because it makes me think of one of the therapists that, so went through five different therapists. The best, the the, the, there's a bright side to the story because about four <laughs> years ago, I found the therapist I still work with today. Um, and with her, it was kind of like us, like talking to a, a close friend, yeah. like talking to somebody I resonate with, we can laugh, like seems like we're old friends or could be good friends. And I've just been consistent with her for the last four years. The therapist I had right before, just a quick story, like the therapist I had right before her, it was a very similar experience with you where I really love, 
I'm really close with my grandparents and I love working with old people and talking with old people. And it was a woman who was definitely like my grandmother's age. And so I went into the appointment so optimistic and excited. And that was the, purely, it was because of her age. Familiarity, and her sure. Familiarity. And I was like, this is going to be great. And I'm, I'm sharing things about like dating on Tinder and <laughs> dating, you know, online dating and like the horrible stories that have, or, you know, my horrible experiences with that and stuff like that. And that's just part of my story and my journey. And I don't know if it was a communication difference or quite frankly, it was the age difference mm. that did not make that a therapist, that therapist a good fit for me. Because I actually, instead of felt feeling like, oh, you know, grandmother love, like, you know, nurturing, I actually felt, a, I don't think it was her intention, but I felt judged. Like, mm -hmm. well, you go on that date? And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's um it it my experience also was a double-edged sword you know where it's like suddenly I was with someone who was familiar but of course wanting to talk about all of these things that I had never really expressed to anyone close to me about a trauma in college and its impact about what I viewed as like you know really horrible uh relationship with alcohol at the time I mean and so to then put myself in that situation and then it's like you pray I felt myself put like my good girl hat on and then not want to even express fully because I wanted some sort of like approval, you know, yeah. like, who again, it was, you know, that, that early twenties, I'll, you know, forgive Kaylee, little Kaylee for going through that. But I think that, you know, where we're going to get into, like, it really matters as you think about what's the relationship that you want to have, what's the goal that you're, you know, seeking when you reach out to a therapist um, cause yeah, you don't want to be in there trying to put on a front and be accepted no. by your therapist <laughs> that is going to backfire. And like you said, just like, you know, it's going to create this loop of, of talking of, um, closing off more, which I, when you right. said that, I was like, oh, I could just imagine myself in that office, just like, you know, closing off, stepping back and being afraid to share things, which was why I was there. So, right. All right. So right. let's flash forward to how you found <laughs> Yeah. You know, this, this there and how that sort of shifted your your view of what therapy is and then of course the vision for what you're doing right now yeah so um my therapist actually it was quite by accident so like I said you know I call myself a therapy dropout <laughs> um, <laughs> so eight years five therapists and finally when I realized that last therapist like okay very endearing but or I perceived as endearing and familiar and it did not work out. She actually then referred me to go back to my company's EAP. And she's like, well, you know, like, I'm sorry, it didn't work out. And at, at this point I was like, fine with sharing, like this isn't working out. Mm -hmm. So she told me, you know, go to your company's EAP. Maybe they can give you a more tailored match. Um, unfortunately I called, it was still like, what's your zip code? And then gave me a list. So this really was by accident. Like it was like one therapist referring me to another program, to another program. And then I finally like met with this woman who about the same age, you know, we have different backgrounds, but, and I don't know if that works for everyone, but for me, that kind of made a difference, but about the same age, similar experiences. I think like um, we have different backgrounds, but I just felt super comfortable with her. And so I don't know if that's what's transformed it because it feels like talking to a friend and I can be totally authentic. But like you mentioned, that's needed for therapy to be effective because I need to be able to share some of the things that I probably never told anyone except her. <laughs> and I don't, I need to be in there able to cry or be angry or express myself without needing to put on, I'm usually a very professional person and I need to be able to take that guard off um, as I'm sure you can resonate with. And so um, with her, we've just been really consistent and she's been really gracious and saying, hey, you know, you're a highly function. This is another thing we can talk about too. Like you're a highly functioning individual. Like you're, you are, um, you know, doing great at work. And like, for the most part, I'm, able to get out of bed in the morning and I'm like energetic and positive. There are just some things, some topics that are really hard for me. Mm -hmm. um, and those things trigger my anxiety. So I think because she perceived that and she was able to tell me like, you know, I think we continue to see each other as much as you feel comfortable with. 
So not pressuring me, which was really great. Um, and so there are quite frankly, at least this is what's worked for me. There are some times where I'll go two months, three months and not have an appointment with her and we'll schedule further out. Um, and, you know, I think what's changed is sometimes even two or three months out, I'm like, well, I'm not really dealing with anything right now. I feel fine, but I'll go in because I'm like, you know, I'll honor this appointment and she's somebody fun. I enjoy to speak yeah. with and I'll go in and inevitably something might come up that I'm like, oh, oh I didn't realize I was so stressed mm. and I probably wouldn't have come in to talk about stress to begin with, but I end up talking about like, yeah, my social calendar and my work calendar has really blown up and I'm exhausted. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's like a very common thing though. And, but inevitably, like she's able to help me talk through that. Every time I come out, I feel a sense of relief. So I'm like, this is so interesting because I think I've shifted somehow from a very reactive space where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm crying. I'm going to look for a therapist. <laughs> to the place where I'm actually getting ahead of things. So maybe we got ahead of that stress to, to prevent it from becoming something more like, you know, kind of a, a breakdown or um, a, a panic attack or anxiety or triggering some depression. Like, I think we are now in a proactive space where because I kind of see her consistently, I'm no longer reacting to things that happen to me. I'm actually kind of processing it as it happens or before it happens. And that's been so transformational for mm -hmm. me. Um, and kind of leads me to why we started Therapeasy, just a little bit of a preview. Like we, I really, you know, three years ago, after feeling like things have been going so well with this counselor and I feel so much more grounded in life, I was like, I suddenly am now like a huge mental health care advocate. And I just think that if the process wasn't so challenging and we could get people to a, um, to a strong therapeutic connection with a, a, a therapist that's a good fit for them early on, maybe there would be more retention in therapy and you know people can kind of get to the other side a little bit quicker. Um, and maybe, you know, for those who this, for those where this might work, getting to a preventative or like a proactive space, a maintenance space um, might just kind of naturally occur if you have a great bond with that therapist. So Therapeasy is all about finding your perfect therapist. We like to think of ourselves as the e-harmony for therapy. <laughs> and <laughs> we basically, you know, look at things that go beyond zip code and your location and hours and availability. And we look beyond all of those factors and try to incorporate in some factors that we've actually learned from patients and therapists of like what makes a good match. Mm. Um, so we've learned some factors such as communication style. Oh, okay. Um, you know, we, we're trying to take a crack at like personality fit, um, cultural competency, um, for some folks, they really resonate with people that come from the same background. Um, and so we're taking in to all those, taking, taking in all those factors to give you your top compatible providers right away. You can look at their profiles, start a chat, but no, no more like overwhelming, like 20 page result. We give you your top three compatible providers, kind of like a, you know, dating tool. Yep. <laughs> Explore those profiles. If they don't work out, we can give you more. Um, but so it's really meant to make that first step really easy um, because I think for somebody who's seeking therapy, they may be going through enough already in that moment without having to like learn how to navigate the system. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we want to make it as easy as possible when somebody's already ready to take that step. So I am, um, I love the, I mean, first of all, can we all just say like, we love the name of the company, <laughs> Therapeasy, like you just, awesome. you, you sense what it's about right from the get go. You're like, oh God, yay. Therapy made easy. Okay. Like, yes. I mean, um, so, I mean, I understand why, or I always think it's funny, right? The, the, the journeys that we're on, we're then called to do in life. You know, you didn't set out to like, become an advocate for mental health, but here you are because of your own experience, which I always just find that 
it's so beautiful. You know, we think we have our plan for life and then life gives us another plan uh, and it's even bigger and grander. So you, you have this idea for Therapeasy, but what made you say like, no, I'm going to turn this into a company and like, and I can do this. Oh man. I want to do this. And oh, by the way, I kind of want to do this in the year of a pandemic. Like (laughs) why, why not just say like, oh, I'm going to do, you know, like I'll post about social media, I'll be vocal about it. But um, yeah, what's the drive that you have to, to, to build this incredible company? Yeah, I, you know, since I've started sharing my stories and part of, you know, being a mental health advocate that I kind of found myself becoming um, is sharing your stories and then kind of providing that space for others to share their stories if they want to as well. And since I've started doing that, I kind of started realizing, wow, like there's, you know, people around me have very similar stories. And oftentimes, like, maybe they don't stick to it as long as I did. Mm -hmm. So I went through five therapists until I found my perfect therapist. And so I have had, you know, stories or I've learned of experiences of really close friends around me who gave up. So they're like, you know, the first therapist did not work out. I don't have time for this. And then they stop. But being really close friends with them, I know that they're dealing with something probably 10 times you know, as difficult to deal with um, as maybe what I was going through. And I'm like, I cannot believe that you're going to give up. Like you really need to stick to it. But not everybody may have the luxury of one, like having a friend that's going to continue to encourage or push them to do it. Mm -hmm. And and quite honestly, some people don't have the means, whether it's financially or time to like continue to go through this process to find a therapist. So I think that is what hearing these stories around me is what really propelled me to think, oh my goodness, like I can move, I I want to like move this idea to something of like a tool that more people can use. Because I actually, like, I feel like there is a very strong need for this. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think, you know, in that kind of storytelling about three years ago, I met my two co-founders, John and Katie, which really actually, you know, put a little bit more fire to it as well, because they shared similar personal stories. They thought the idea was great. They wanted to be a part of it. And I think for me, like, I definitely like, I definitely feed off of the energy of others, you know, sometimes yep. the positivity, uh, the positive energy around, um, from others. So seeing, you know, Katie, who is a pediatrician, Dr. Richardson, seeing her passionate about what I was talking about where, when it was just an idea, mm-hmm. um, and seeing John, you know, who has a financial background um, in hospitals, like feel like this, you know, this is a viable idea. And this, you know, we really can help a lot of people. Maybe we need to do more research around it. Seeing their like positivity about it really, pushed me to say, we can do this. Like, if you want in, let's do it together. Yeah. And so, um, it took a while, like three years ago, you know, back to your question about like starting it in the middle of a pandemic, we actually started kind of storming and norming like three years ago, trying to like figure out what makes a good match. Are we onto something? Mm-hmm. Are we competitors, you know, doing all this research to figure out what's that algorithm that's going to match people as accurately as possible. So three years ago, we started, then we had to, you know, all three of us were not developers by trade. <laughs> another obstacles or like how do we make this thing (laughs) like I had this idea (laughs) yeah how do we make it now and so um we then found a developer that we really um worked well with and that's what really kind of made it take off Mm because we're like okay are we in this if we don't ever put our money to invest behind it and build this it'll always just be an idea yeah and so we're like we just have to try Um, And so last year we spent the year developing and building the tool and then the pandemic happened (laughs) and we, and and people's mental health needs went through the roof. It's true. Yeah. And uh, we had like, you know, planned on May, 2020, like that's when we were going to launch. And so we stuck with it. We're like, this is not ideal, but at the same time, what better time 
um, that then now to launch something like this when people need a way to connect with a therapist virtually more than ever. Yeah. And so um, we launched, it wasn't very glamorous. We had a virtual launch party. <laughs> <laughs> have, like, you know, a big, a big like celebration. And, um, but there are just little things like that, that we've had to scale back or do virtually. Um, which is a little bit of a bummer, but at the same time, hey, like, you know, I'm quarantined. What a great year to like put my energy into something <laughs> that I really believe in. So for the, um, like, just break it down, like help us visualize like how it actually works, right? Like I'm imagining okay. going to the site, I put in the things that, you know, about me or I think are important, but just give us a snapshot of, of what it's like to, to use Therapeasy and and even just like business model, right? Of like, what does it cost for someone to use Therapeasy? Let's let's go there for a little bit and then we're going to come back to, I really want to know your leadership lessons from this year. I'm sure you yeah. have many, but so we'll, we'll come to there after just giving us a sense of the actual product and service. Definitely. Um, so I, so as a patient, it'll always be free. That is, you know, kind of one of the values that the three founders really, um, really want to stick to um, mm -hmm. because we find that definitely we want to lower barriers when you're looking for care. So we don't want to add another cost um, when you're just searching for your perfect therapist. So for patients, it's always free. The business model is that we charge a monthly subscription to the providers, um, but kind of in a no strings attached model. So that's you know, without going too much into it, that's one of the ways that we are very different from other competitors that you see out there mm -hmm. because it's non-contractual. It's just like your Netflix, like maybe even better than Netflix. Cause I think, I don't know if there are contractual <laughs> terms of Netflix, but you can really truly cancel, let's say next month when your panel is full and you can't accept any new, any more patients, you can cancel your subscription um, from a month to month basis. And so we, charge an affordable subscription fee to the providers. Um, and really it's because we're helping them find their um, clients that will be a good fit to them as well. Um, and for them, that means that they may see a patient more than one session or two right. sessions. And they're actually you know, able to see if a patient for a longer term or through the duration of whatever they might be working through, um, which is something that you know, from a therapist perspective, I think it's really meaningful to their work. The therapists that we've talked with, they say for them, they really want to see the patient or the client successful in the end. And yeah. so yeah. it's also really difficult for them when they see so much churn or turnover in their patients. So for a patient, you go on and you're absolutely right. You fill out a quick questionnaire and we try to make it a little interactive. So we're just learning about what you're dealing with, what you want to work on, we learn about your preferences. So we might ask you a question like, um, you know, hey, Kaylee, like what, what is, um, what do you prefer in a therapist? Do you want to, do you want to work with somebody who is attentive and a listener um, so you can really share? Or do you want to work with somebody um, that is more action driven and gives you homework? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so we kind of try to create these archetypes so that we learn from you, what is your communication style preference for your therapist? What's your personality style for your therapist? Um, we also ask questions like hours, um, what your insurance is. So we're insurance agnostic. And so we, I, I mean, I know I'm biased, but I really think that we could become like the first stop for anybody, um, regardless of what your insurance is, or if you have insurance at all, because that's one of the factors we're trying to, you know, kind of measure in the map. So then at the end, um, you know, you complete your survey, you don't have to wait. Um, we don't, you know, it's all virtual. So you get your top three matches with a compatibility score, learning from dating sites, um, you know, compatibility score, and you can click into the profile, you can see why you matched with that pro particular provider, um, learn about them, go to their website. Um, you can actually initiate a chat or a two-way messaging on our system. Um, and that really is, you know, for you to continue to explore to see if it'll be a good fit or, you know, if you're ready, schedule an appointment um, through that chat. 
but we've seen that it's been helpful to say, okay, I got three matches. I kind of like all three of them, but let me just message the three of them and see what their areas of expertise is or like what's their <laughs> communication style, even just through messenger. Um, and then I'll schedule my appointment. Yeah. So it's to help you like really feel comfortable before you make the commitment to schedule your first appointment. Mm-hmm. What, um, I just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking because it, it, it's really important to do that up front, just like connection, connecting, you know, if I think okay. of doing, you know, CBT therapy in Washington, DC. Right. And it's like, once I like got an appointment with the, per- you know, it's like, all right, this is who I'm sticking with. I didn't know if it was good or bad. Same right. <laughs> doing uh, like EMDR, some therapy and in San Francisco, it's like, all right, like, I don't know if we really gel, but same thing, like you have the time and the tool, so let's do it. And looking back, like I can just imagine if I'd actually walked in, right, like already feeling a connection and an openness, a willing to share, willingness to share, because I do feel like so much about what happens in therapy is about creating that space to feel, yeah, especially for you know, the very high achievers out there among us who it's like uh, that, that can be our, that our Achilles heel, we don't want to go there. And so if you already sort of walked in with your guard down just a little bit, the progress you could make, how much faster you can make it um, and how much better it would feel versus like, wait, did I just go in and like share the same story that I've been telling myself for the last 10 years? And what is that getting me? You know, because it's just making it more real than all of these other things. So Um, I, yeah, I just love what you're doing and I'd love to know, okay, this is now me putting back on my like former, you know, startup leader hat on like you, okay. In year one, like what are the metrics that have mattered, you know, just, just to track of like early signs of success. So whether that's connection rate or, um, just number of users, what, what matters to you as you build the company? So, um, what matters to me, we're not. I'll be transparent, like able to measure just yet, but we're definitely working towards it um, for 2021 is like what you mentioned, the effectiveness of that connection. Yeah. Um, because we're so early on right now, you know, we kind of rolled out the, the MVP. Uh, we rolled out, you know, just kind of the, the most basic structure that we had envisioned and we're going to add features to it over time. But what we rolled out um, at least kind of at the bare minimum, we can see who's matching with who, are people chatting, um, and we can see a little bit of like if they schedule, but we don't see too much of that experience or that journey after they've scheduled. And so um, in some of the new features that we're rolling out, we want to learn from patients and providers, those who are willing to share like, hey, you scheduled three months ago, how'd it go? You know, what made a good match and what, what made it a good match? And, or maybe why was it a, bad match. Um, And what's really exciting about this is over time, um, as the tool continues to get more robust, we can actually like pepper in some like machine learning so that the algorithm gets smarter over time and learns from the patterns like, hey, actually, did you know, for example, like religious background is really important. Oh, great. That's a factor we need to put in. Um, So we're hoping that the that the algorithm gets smarter and smarter over time. Um, but some of the metrics that, so the connective connection, or I'm sorry, the effective connection is probably my most meaningful or important metric, although we can't quite get there yet. But within the first year, you know, since May, we've onboarded 150 providers from Colorado. Right. And um, we facilitated over 800 matches. Wow. So I'm like, wow, those metrics are powerful because I think there's, even with the other tools out there, there's just such a strong need for this, um, you know, matching service that we're seeing some great traction, even just within our state. And once in a while, um, you know, we'll get a patient or a provider reach out from out of town, like trying to sign up for a profile but since we haven't scaled or expanded just yet, um, we unfortunately, you know, have to kind of keep their information and let them know when we do go to their market. But that's been really, really reassuring as a leader for this organization is that, whoa, there's like some great traction in this. Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe it hasn't blown up quite yet <laughs> the way that, you know, maybe we wanted it to, but there's good momentum and, you know, we're hearing some good feedback. And so, that's 
been really, really great to see this year um, and gives me energy to build more for mm. next year. I mean, it's, it's incredible momentum. I mean, I feel the energy <clears throat> to be able to onboard that number of physicians, make that many connections. I love, you know, thinking back to my time at SnapDocs, like I just love those moments where it's like, yeah, people are wanting to use your product and service and you just can't offer it there yet, you know, where you're like, okay, I hear you, like it's coming, it's coming for us, which was all about like real estate closings, which was also very state specific Ooh. and law specific, mm -hmm. just like, you know, we have here or you have, you're, you're, you're kind of coming across too. It's like hearing that is just so good where you're like, okay, they're it's like, you know, in your heart, but then to get the feedback, right? Like that the demand is there, that people are looking for something like this. Um, I'm like, I'm, I'm super envious of this position you're in, right? Of like, you're staying the course, you've got the vision, you know, it's like the things are coming together and you're doing it on something that you feel super passionate about, which just like add that to the, you know, I don't, I don't see anyone stopping you and your team. <laughs> Thank you. Very, very sweet. <laughs> and I, I need that energy to keep, keep that momentum. <laughs> well, cause it's not easy. Right. So like, if you look back at this year, like maybe share with us just one, one moment of um, maybe of doubt or of challenge yeah. or of just saying like, you know what, mm, maybe the space is too saturated and let me just go back to whatever I was doing before. Like, did you feel that? When did you feel it? How did you get out of it? Definitely. Um, you know, when we first turned it on and it's so funny because I, it's like, I should have known the books all say this or the literature all say this, right? Um, <laughs> if you build it, they'll come. And it's kind of a misnomer because that's not totally accurate, um, especially in business. And so I will say that one of the really challenging, um, challenging moments this year, and it continues to be off again, on again, challenging for, for myself and the founders is being able to attract um, traffic to the site, mm -hmm. yep. patients to the site, clients who are looking for therapy, but as, as you know, many, I'm sure business owners or entrepreneurs know, like search engine optimization kind of puts you on like page 50 when you're just starting out. Yeah. And so even if you're typing in looking for a therapist in Colorado, like you may not come across therapy. And so that's been a really difficult awakening this year mm -hmm. for us because we were getting so much great traction and um, from providers that are like, the, what a cool tool, how innovative. Um, I'd love to have a better match to my clients. Yeah. We saw the providers onboarding to the tool and then quickly learned we are not driving enough traffic to the site and advertising as you know, you probably know too, Kaylee, like super expensive yeah. social media advertising, um, Google advertising. And so we, the three of us, you know, I hadn't shared, like we bootstrapped up to this point. So we're all self-funding this project. And so the advertising costs have become something of like a surprise to us. Like we knew there would be advertising costs, but in terms of the dollars that are needed to convert somebody just yeah. browsing the site and actually doing a search and finding a therapist has been really hard. Um, and so we often feel, you know, the doubt piece, we often feel like we're not delivering value to our providers, who is a very important customer. Yeah. Um, and so we've had to like, kind of go back and like really figure out what in our marketing strategy worked and what doesn't that we had to like fail fast. Like, mm -hmm. okay, we're not going to do that again. <laughs> that was expensive. And we did not reach an audience that an audience special that we needed but this really worked let's try this one again and so we've had to like really um spend a lot of time like cultivating the marketing more mm -hmm. um, and honestly it's still something that we find challenging like we're like there has to be ways to reach out to people who are looking for therapy who may not be on social media for example who may not come across an ad and so we're still kind of searching organic ways. Like, you know, one of the things that has kind of worked out is um, reaching out, which unexpectedly, you know, learning as a leader, um, reaching out to friends and then really kind of mobilizing your network to say, can I go and, 
are you a part of an organization or um, an, a club or would your work allow for me to come in and like do a quick like five minute um, spiel at your team meeting or whatever it is. So really kind of putting that like call out to your network yeah. has been something that's been really helpful. Um, and probably still something that I, you know, as I'm saying it right now out loud, something that we can do more of um, because that word of mouth is so powerful. And in a pandemic, I don't, I don't really know how to do the word of mouth right. without being able to be out and about. <laughs> and so it's become something where I try to join like a virtual meeting at the beginning of a, you know, a club meeting or a team meeting of one of my friends and do a quick spiel um, about therapies. It's a free tool. And so it's, you know, um, usually gains a lot of traction because people just don't know about it. Yeah. So we're still learning of like ways like this where we can grow a little bit more organically. Um, mm -hmm. And that's been, that's been a, a hard awakening this year. <laughs> it's like, oh, you build it and they don't come. <laughs> It's, um, I'm, I'm so happy that you shared that with us. You know, I feel like, um, you know, launching a very different type of venture this year as well. Yeah. It's the same thing where you realize like we are both on, we're at the very, 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 very beginning of what will be a very long journey. And yet I think what I hear from you is sort of similar to me, like had the expectation of like, oh, I just build this thing. Everyone's going to find me and love it. And why wouldn't they? And you know, let's rock. Yeah. And then you realize you have to go back into like, there's probably, it's not hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's the opposite. It's like one by one evangelization, you know, yeah. it really does take, and just appreciating each person that says yes and signs up and for you, you know, makes that connection with the provider, knowing that like, this is what it takes to then be able to build the business for your you're going to attract the capital. You're going to be able to do all the advertising, you know, in the world that you want to, to share your message because it's so important. But I do think there's this like big unknown of like in these first years, when you put it out to market, it's exactly what you're doing. It's through the people that you know, the network that you build, the one-off conversations, just the one person saying yes. And then you start to feel that momentum. And then sure enough, you hit the next plateau, you know, and you're like, oh, okay, once that comes, then, you know, there's a new set of tactics, a new set of things that you need to be really thinking about. But yeah, I'm just, I'm smiling over here because I'm remembering like for me this past year and then back in startup world, we were going office to office, escrow, wow. officer, escrow officer, like, let me show you how to log in. And I thought to myself, like, wait, I joined a tech company. This isn't what I... <laughs> thought it would be, you know, like road shows out to Modesto and Stockton, California. And then you look back and you realize like that was essential to being able to spread the vision and help people and make those connections. And of course, for us to be able to learn too, what else did people need? So anyway, you're, you're right where you need to be. And it's like, oh, those moments though, where you're like, oh, it'd be nice. Could someone just like 10 million in advertising tomorrow so we yes. can blow this thing up, you know, <laughs> because people really need this. Like, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. I think I think as leaders, we're meant to go through this process to ourselves of the self-doubt, of the resilience, of coming back, of still staying true to the vision when people are not really understanding it and finding those those early people that that we don't even have to convince, right? Like they're already there on their journey to say like, yes, this would make my life better. Right, right. And it's, it is definitely like growing your network, um, you know, like me meeting you through yeah. a podcast <laughs> um, and it's growing your network and it's like really not being, I mean, th this in itself as a leadership, I think lesson is like not being shy about it. There's actually so many people in your network that want to help you um, and they just don't really know how to plug in until you put out a call, you know, for help. Yeah. And so um, I'm sure my network is like tired of hearing from me by now, but I'm like, hey, <laughs> like, would somebody post this or is, you know, can somebody um, facilitate my like a meeting between me and your HR team so maybe we can get some information to your company um but 
it's really amazing. Like how many people want to help even, you know, people that you just meet, you know, (laughs) help once they understand how to help. Yeah. Um, And so it's that, that in itself has been a leadership lesson. Um, in some ways is like, this is your baby. This is your passion. Don't be shy. Like you are the one that needs to ask for help. It's like, don't be shy, be clear in your ask, make it easy for people to support you if they feel called to, um, and then get comfortable with a lot of rejection, you know, yes. like a lot of no's and knowing that each one is getting you closer to the yes and to what you desire. And I, I don't know for you, but I felt like when I was back more in like the, the corporate world, even before tech startup world, like so much came to us because we were already a big established company, you know, like we had the brand, the deals were there. And like, looking back, I'm like, oh, that really was not easy, but like, it, it was a different type of challenge where like the place that you're in is like, if you are not the initiator, mm. who is, you know, right. like it's you and, you know, lucky for you and for your team, um, like you have the vision, you have the enthusiasm, you have the willingness to put yourself out there. So the ingredients, you know, to be really successful moving forward. So Thanks. let's, um, as we look to, to wrap up our conversation, I just, I love, um, I, it's so fun, right? There was it's like covering therapy and mental health issues, starting a startup, <laughs> what yeah. that journey has been like, like for, so for you in 2021, like, what do you hope that the company achieves and what do you want to make sure that, you know, our audience really understands about kind of how they can tap into uh, this, this incredible kind of platform that you're building? Yeah, thank you. Um, We in 2021 are launching kind of like a version two. Um, So a user interface kind of redesign to make it easier to find information on there and to learn about what the process is like when you're ready to seek therapy or when you're ready to create a profile as a provider. Um, So we're launching this new um, version, version uh, 2.0, and with that comes more provider tools. And I shared a little bit about how I think some of that doubt this year has been, oh boy, like we're not delivering enough value to our providers and we really want to. Like we want, if they're paying for the service, we definitely want to deliver, you know, something that they find very valuable. And so we've we've designed and developed some tools like a dashboard for them to use in the site, um, some new features where they're able to see how many times patients are clicking on their website, for example. So they're kind of tracking, you know, like the exposure they're getting from our site. Um, And so we've created some new tools for the providers with the providers in mind, some new tools for the patients as well, um, so that we can continue to hear from them three months down the road after you've used Therapeasy, how are things going? Um, So some engagement tools like that. So we're really excited to roll that out in 2021. Um, And with that, I think, you know, as we kind of see maybe um, more growth and some more momentum and maybe even funding, we're definitely like starting some of those conversations because as I shared, like with just the three of us, it's been really hard. I can't imagine, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're hoping um, with, if we see some more traction in all of these um, aspects, we'd love to scale. And I don't know if it happens in 2021 um, or beyond, but we'd love to start expanding and looking at other markets. Mm-hmm. Um, like I shared, we are already getting like some kind of one-off requests, like, Hey, please come to Wisconsin, for example, <laughs> like, we'd love to, like, I, I, you know, but I think this is our tool is one of, is one of those things where before we enter a market, we want to be very like methodical about it so that as a client or a, pay, a potential patient, when you're going through the search, we want to make sure that there's enough providers on the site to, uh, for a threshold for you to be able to find a good match. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's why we're being very methodical about like the markets we enter and how we enter it. And when do we turn it on for providers and when do we turn it on for patients? Um, So that's something to look forward to in 2021 is, you know, maybe the potential of growing, expanding outside of Colorado. Um, Yeah, and so we're really excited for that. Um, And uh, right now, you know, if you are in Colorado and you're listening, (laughs) (laughs) 
are not in Colorado and you just want to have a conversation or talk about collaboration, that's been really fun is collaborating with um, other entrepreneurs, other mental health organizations. Um, we'd love to hear from you, learn of ways to collaborate. Um, so either whether it's the tool or business to business. Um, and if you are seeking therapy and, you know, in Colorado, you can just go to our site, www.therapyz.co. So this is actually another leadership lesson I didn't get to share with you. Dot com takes you to a different site. It was some, it was a domain that was taken when we first bought the domain um, looked into the domain, but it wasn't active. Mm. And then it became active when we became active. Right. And for a totally different service. They are doing like speech pathology. Uh. So we are www.therapyz.co or colorado.co mm -hmm. and then, um, or www.mytherapyz.com also takes oh. you to. Okay. Awesome. No, that's really good to know too, to, to share in the, um, to share in the intro. Yeah, I'm sure the uh, therapyz.com, now that they see what you're building, I can't imagine what they're gonna charge you for this domain, so. <laughs> no, I know, and and I mean, it's just funny because mm -hmm. both of us turned on, so I'm sure both of us are like, why do we keep getting people looking for speech pathology <laughs> versus the other, right? Um, I'm sure we're driving traffic to their site that they're a little bit perplexed by as well. <laughs> That's too funny. Um, Christine, it has been such a pleasure having you on the podcast, getting to you, know you better as a leader. Like for me, I just, I admire entrepreneurs so much and, you know, to hear what motivates you and how you've stuck with this vision and what you're creating next year. Like it, it's super, like it's super, super inspiring on that level. And then the fact that you're building something that is so needed in the world right now and making it easier for everyone to access it. Um, so I just want to thank you so much and invite you to share any, any final words before we close today. Well, thank you, Kaylee. I, I share the mutual admiration. And so actually a final word for you would be, I'd love to like you know, I don't know, meet for coffee, just, you know, virtually sometime, because I, I think I would be able to learn a lot from you too, as well, because you've launched, you know, a new platform this year, a new project, um, an organization. And I think, you know, in our conversation during the podcast, I'm like, wow, I like, I really think I could learn a lot from you too, in terms of marketing and leadership. Um, so that's just a plug on the side for you. <laughs> and, um, yes. <laughs> Um, and I guess a final word is we didn't touch on it much, but um, in my story, I did share that like I've been able to move from kind of a reactive space with mental taking care of my mental health to a proactive space. And I think mm -hmm. I would just encourage everyone, whether you're a highly ambitious, high functioning professional, or you know somebody who's really dealing with something very serious um, um, or and not just stress related or you know something very serious whatever it is if you're looking for professional growth or personal growth or honestly like you know there are serious um, issues that you need to need to help coping with or working through whatever it is in that spectrum i would just encourage you to maybe you know consider looking into therapy um, and I think, you know, one of the things I shared with Kaylee before the conversation today was that we often take care of our physical health, you know, in a very preventative maintenance way, or we're, we're starting to transition to that way of thinking, right? Hey, we got to exercise, you know, we have to eat healthy and once a year, or, you know, once every couple of years, I need to go in for a physical checkup, even if I am healthy and I'm not experiencing any problems dentist, you know, dentistry is the same way. We go in for a dental cleaning twice a year, even if we're not experiencing any problems. Um, you know, I always laugh because I'm like, even with our cars, like we take it in for an oil change because it's the maintenance that we need. And I think traditionally or historically, like we don't think of mental health the same way. And so I would just invite everyone to do a check-in either with yourself or with those around you and that may not always lead to therapy, but just doing a mental health check-in and kind of 
figuring out where you are, how you're doing, how are those around you doing? I think that conversation is important yeah. because yeah. we don't often check in with our mental health the way we do with other things. It's like our, our brain, our emotion, this is our operating system, you know, and we, we get sent updates all the time from Apple for our Mac, for our phones, like we're updating things yeah. at the time, you know, and like the thing that matters most that actually creates our reality the most. So likewise. All right. Thank you, Christine. All right. Bye. So hold on.